Is the American empire collapsing? Are we in the last days? Is everything we know uh, as normal or new as normal coming to an end? Uh, what, you know, in the world of pop culture, you think of uh, the crash of civilization in terms of zombie apocalypse movies or Mad Max, things like that. But there was a story that pre predated our, our Hollywood versions of the end, and that could be found in the um, King James Bible. I'm talking about Matthew 24, the end times passage. And if that is the father of apocalypse stories, I think it behooves us to investigate and see if there's any, you know, thing we could glean from that to shed more light on what's what we're experiencing now. Because even if you take the position that that was a myth, uh, and you, you'd have a good argument because Matthew wrote that gospels like 70 years uh, after Jesus died, it wasn't written at the time of Jesus. He wasn't there. But when he, even when Matthew wrote it, his world was collapsing. He was experiencing an apocalypse because that was about the time the Romans invaded Judea after the insurrection and the civil wars that took place there. And his conception of society was radically altered. He was experiencing he was experiencing an end times moment. So maybe that's why there's some, that authenticity bleeds into the story. But let's judge the story on its own merit and see if we could um, find correlations and relevant uh, components of it. All right, so the, the, like I said, I'm using the King James Bible. I'm gonna paraphrase. I think it might get a little boring if I read the Old English. So the story starts out with uh, Jesus and his disciples that come out of the temple. And the temple at that time, this is the second temple in Judea, it's a religious power structure, but it's also like their central bank and uh, Fort Knox is where they keep the gold. And the people who run the temple uh, at that time they held all the power, at least locally in that area. The Roman Empire were the top dogs, but they had a harmonious business relationship because they were managing things. They were doing deals with the Romans. They were making sure the taxes were collected and brought into the temple to be pipelined back to Rome. Uh, so the pro-Roman faction, like uh, the Sadducees or the Pharisees, even, uh, you know, they were for the status quo, cats like Jesus and his disciples, and there were many different factions of uh, unrest. You had the zeal Zealots, the Essenes, uh, there was, you know, who wanted independence from Roman rule, and the bank cartels, and the, the religious organizations, the or you know, the power, religious power structure. Uh, so, the, you know, a lot of heavy conflict. And today, I think we see that... Um, we see we have analogous institutions: Roman Empire, American Empire, uh, this this temple, uh, this money temple, our Federal Reserve. You know, you, you could see you could see the correlations. All right, let's let's keep going. So they leave the temple. He said he's telling him one day this whole this temple is going to be on the ground. It's going to be in a pile of rubble. The place is going to be knocked down. The whole city, Jerusalem, and they go to the Mount of Olives. And they're chilling out. They're just they, they're getting into the discussion. They're getting further into the discussion. Uh, in my view of archetypal Jesus, I see them sitting around smoking a joint, get into some heavy conversation. And so they ask him. They say, "How do we know when the end time is here? When the shit really is going to hit the fan? We are at the end of an age. This." Rothschild consciousness, this military industrial complex consciousness. In other words, to, to boil it down, a corrupt power elite controlling the mass of humanity 
and by and large making everybody's life miserable. When is that system going to end? Uh, not only when it's going to end, but end in such a way that that there is a catastrophic global collapse that is so destructive it wipes the slate clean. We have like a tabula rasa scenario, and then we create our new uh, operating system that is harmonious to planetary life. But before we have this paradise, this kingdom of God, uh, or the higher operating system, we have to have a real bad collapse. So he's going to tell them, he's going to say, all right, well, this is what you got to look out for, maybe at least be aware of these general conditions. He starts off by saying, "No man, make sure no man deceives, deceives you. Many come in your, my name saying I am the Christ. Well, right off the bat, we think of Jim Jones, David Koresh, kind of the cult leaders, Reverend Sung Young Moon. He said he was the Christ. Remember the Moonies, who actually owns the Washington Times. Uh, you know, so a cult owns one of America's uh, biggest newspapers. Or not one of the, well, I wouldn't say the biggest, but a big one. All right, so a Christ cult. So a lot of people wear the, use the Christ brand. Monk Mike Pompeo is a Christian Zionist. He believes in this end time stuff and bringing it about. Mike Pence, very powerful people. All these, uh, what's his name? Ted Cruz, they're all evangelicals. I mean, they're corrupt as all hell, but they at least use the Christ brand and all this, you know, Christian fascism, we see, you know, we see it where, uh, you know, they're talking Jesus, 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 but it's all about killing the gays, killing the trans people. Um, you know, we have to wage war. Uh, the, we have to support the big oil corporations, the endless wars in the Middle East. It's the Christ brand, but it is a false Christ. Uh, or the Vatican. Look how corrupt the Vatican is with all their banks. Uh, they're involved in international drug smuggling pedophile rings. Uh, they work with the Rothschild Zionist in their investments. Uh, they help overthrow governments. Uh, definitely have helped with, uh, especially in South America, predominantly Catholic countries have worked with the CIA. So they use the Christ brand. Uh, watch out for the false Christ. I think Matthew's words uh, resonate in that regard. Then he's talking about wars and rumors of wars. Well, that's, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. Um, sure, the Roman Empire, at the time Matthew wrote that, if you're a global empire like the Romans, you have to constantly invade countries, steal their natural resources, uh, get into their monetary system so that, that you could skim off the top or a good chunk of it and send it back to Rome, to their, the, their elites. Yeah, so you're always going to have a situation of a war or a rumor of war. Well, let's look at our own America, United States empire. Since, I mean, we've had wars since the beginning of the country, but since 2001, we've been in a state of continuous war or rumor of war. Invade Iraq, got to get the oil. Invade Afghanistan, we want the pipeline routes. Invade Syria, we want the pipeline routes and the natural gas deposits. Uh, overthrow Venezuela, steal their oil. Oil plays big in this. Uh, so you should show you the power of the energy corporations and their integration with the bank cartels and the military industrial complex and uh, you know other lobbies. <clears throat> so in a time of, when you have a global empire that steals, there is either gonna be a war, there's gonna be a war, and there's always gonna be a room of war. Very relevant. And he's saying as that hypes up, as that ramps up, the more wars, the more rumors of wars, that's when you know when it reaches, like it starts to go into that red zone, end times are coming. Okay, so he talks about nations shall rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdom. The King James Bible was translated in the 1600s. I would imagine a lot, some of the nuances and colloquialisms uh, of the original Aramaic, the Greek, the Hebrew were lost. They may have technically uh, translated the word in a correct fashion, but they may have lost some of the subtle meaning. 
So I think it gives me a little artistic license. Uh, nation against nation, where well, we could talk, be talking about a nation state, kingdom against kingdom. Well, a kingdom could be one powerful entity against another. A kingdom is a power source, right? It could be Microsoft. It could be Amazon. It could be the military industrial complex. And they could be fighting other power sources, other kingdoms like China, Russia, you know, power sources against power sources. And even you may see uh, the power elites break off and go into their own civil war. So at some point, as the as neoliberalism uh, starts to make the pie smaller and smaller, as they're fighting over the, you know, as the pieces gets, as the pie gets smaller and they're fighting, uh, there's less pieces to go around, you may see a point where even the kingdoms of the power elites turn against other kingdoms, maybe one large corporation versus another corporation. That'll be uh, the next world war. Or what, what is really, a, or what is really a world war could be Goldman Sachs, the military industrial complex, and uh, the deep state and, uh, you know, other, other allies versus like Russia, China, Iran. He also talks about there's going to be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes all over. Uh, yeah, well, famine, sure, you, you kill the oceans. The scientists say the ocean's going to be dead by 2040, no fish life. You're going to have famine. You poison all the... Uh, or the earth and the soil with Monsanto, you're going to have famine. Um, you have all these wars that create refugee crises. You're going to have famine. Pestilences, that's like a plague or a pandemic. Hmm, pandemic. Nah, never happened. All right, let's go. Um, and earthquakes. Well, Haiti, as you know, you're doing all this. They, they were... They're having tremors all over in the United States because they're fracking and it's they're fucking with the the fault lines. Who knows? Definitely uh, could increase earthquakes in places you never dreamed of having them. There's a fault line right here in New York City. And so when all this ramps up, when there's more wars and rumors of war that are than usual, when there's more pestilence, famines, uh, you know, pandemics. Uh, calamities, then we're getting, we're getting ready. Things are going into the red zone. And then he said, at that time, they'll deliver you up to be afflicted. They'll kill you and you should be hated by all nations for my, my name's sake. So what he's saying is, if you're preaching the truth, and he's using himself as an example, Matthew's using Christ, or not himself, because Matthew, Jesus isn't talking. Jesus never said this. This is an author's uh, account of what was said is using his imagination. Now, if you're a religious Christian, you could say, well, he was, you know, uh, he was acting like a court stenographer. God was beaming uh, the, the dialogue into his head and he was writing it down. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're more like me, I'm looking at more of a author connecting to the connect collective consciousness and kind of getting the feel of his times and maybe the personal before and Using, you know, just using his own um, experience and writing to convey a universal message. Uh, and so, if so, you have this message, but anybody preaching the truth is going to be persecuted, right? So, Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, when people reveal the truth, when they have a message of truth, that is, is, forms a counter narrative to the global elites, uh, whether it's in the time of Rome, Roman, uh, the Roman Empire, or today, our own United States Empire, our Goldman Sachs uh, kingdoms, our um, you know, Raytheon kingdoms, or Exxon Mobil kingdoms, the, this confederation, those people who oppose that narrative that the, the elites are trying to lay on you or reveal the truth of the, the, the true crimes that are transpiring, they're going to not only be afflicted and killed, but they're going to be hated. How many uh, corporate Democrat lemmings on uh, 
MSM, you know, Twitter hate Julian Assange that he dared to expose that Hillary rigged the 2016 election. Uh, this is what they will, they hate truth tellers. And a lot of people, even non global elites, even the mass of automatons hate truth tellers because they're plugged in to this narrative that have been, that has been given to them by Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Steve Jobs, MSNBC, Fox, Rupert Murdoch, and when they have bought into it, so their neural circuitry is wired uh, to make that the truth, that is their matrix, you pull out the matrix plug and lay some truth on them, a lot of the times their psyche shatter, it's too much uh, of a chasm between reality and the propaganda, they can't handle it, so what are they going to do? They are going to hate the truth teller's guts. And this is the mass of humanity. This is most everybody. Only a small minority are going to get that you are being fed, uh, that it's, it's, it's an illusion that you could press a keyboard on a computer screen, create digital money, right? A small group, of, a cabal of, of uh, bankers, and then loan it out at outrageous rates of usury all over the planet, create debt slave people and nations uh, to control completely. And for every dollar you put people into debt, you magically create $10, another $10 out of thin air. It's called fractionalized lending. That's the financial system situation. So when you start, people can't handle the reality that they, they're living their lives on a treadmill for no reason. We have, we have the technology to create an abundant planet. When you, uh, hit people to that, it's too much that the reality, you know, this, they're living in a complete matrix. They are controlled. They are lied to night and day. They don't want to, they're not going to hate the people doing it. They're going to hate the messenger because that's easier to actually, if you hate the people who are doing it to you, then you got to change the system. And that, that create has a whole other set of problems attached to it. So yes, the truth tellers will be hated. And then he talks about iniquity. The words he uses is he says, iniquity shall abound and love of many shall wax cold. Iniquity is corruption, right? A lot of evil. Well, when a system is rigged, Right, uh, so you you become apathetic. Why am I going to go out to vote for this corrupt Democrat, this corrupt Republican? It is all I'm playing this rigged game. I'm I'm sick of it. Uh, I'm checking out. It grows cold. You numb out, and then here we'll give you some mental meds to help you numb out a little more. Uh, you know, we'll give you some entertainment. Numb out. Uh, you know, go into this virtual smartphone world and just atomize that's the game and that's what happens people not get numbed out they become apathetic and they give up and that's what they want they want you to give up so you so you're at the point where you'll accept anything they say and you will plug in the chip or you'll take the vaccine and they'll handle it from there then he talks about those who endure to the end shall be saved well, how do you endure? Well, you have to, I guess, have some kind of code you live by, some kind of belief system, try to find the truth to direct you. Because when you're in a world of illusion, when you're swimming through the matrix of Fox, CNN, MSNBC, only your inner compass is going to guide you. There's, you know, everything else, it's false. They're fucking with the magnetic field. Uh, so you've got to really have a strong lead line compass to uh, figure it out. And then he's saying at the end, the truth will be revealed and people are revealing the truth. He's talking about the gospel of the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is a advanced society where people's needs are taken care of, where human potential is optimized. And people, people like Peter Joseph, Buckminster Fuller, there are prophets who are telling you uh, a better way and as so just like you're seeing this major mass suppression the global elites are working harder to uh, suppress the truth on the other hand there's gonna be another side that starts to disseminate the truth the the gospel of the kingdom of a Kardashev type 2 civilization a Buckminster Fuller civilization 
He also goes into some stuff saying when the end comes, it's going to be it's going to be really intense. You're not going to have time to uh, get your bags and pack. It's going to be overnight, like the COVID violence. I'm sorry, COVID virus. One day you have it, one day you don't. You know, you're normal, you're not. The Great Depression, uh, everything's cool. After that, uh, the stock market collapses, we have a whole other world. Usually major collapses and catastrophes are pretty quick, and he's telling you that. And then I'll end with, he's told, he says, woe on to the women who were pregnant or nursing, they're really going to have it bad. And that's true. When you're in a collapse, whether it was the time of Matthew when he wrote this, when the, you know, the Romans were uh, crushing everybody, or if you were a pregnant woman or a nursing woman in Japan when they dropped uh, the Hiroshima bomb, or you're a pregnant nursing when there's a, uh, an economic collapse or a pandemic, yeah, and all this shit is ramping up, and it's the end time, and it's even happening more, you know, in more severe occurrences. Shit, man, uh, not a good time to be pregnant. You may want to think twice about having kids right now. All right, so interesting stuff. I think it's still relevant, and uh, you know, check it out. Matthew twenty four. Use your own filter to interpret it, and this is the democratic socialist libertarian. Thanks for listening.